well, 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 look who it is. It's the person who's been listening to this podcast and wondering, hey, Ethan, where have you been the past few months? Well, where have I been? I've been busy. We've been making movies, SWAT Godfather. We've been in theater for Spam a lot. I'm an actor. I do things. And now I'm back doing the podcast again. And yeah, you know what? I, I missed you. Did you miss me? Because I missed you. And we have an amazing lineup of guests coming up in this next new era of Ethan Hahn Plus. And we're going to be dropping these weekly now. You heard me weekly. Well, I don't know specifically what day yet by the time I'm recording this, but we're going to be dropping these episodes weekly. And again, thank you again for tuning into Ethan Hunt Plus, where we talk about anything and everything. And anyone who bring on the podcast, we talk about their passions. We talk about what their niche is and what they want to pursue in this crazy life, you know? And today I have someone that I have just met recently, not too long ago. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Jiu-Jitsu jiu expert and Kirby enthusiast, Josh Sacchetti. Welcome, Josh. Welcome to the podcast, man. Oh, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Dude, yeah, this is a blast. So uh, what I want to tell everyone real quick, Josh here showed up in his Kirby costume. <laughs> now, yeah, so Kirby, where does, where does this come from real quick? Like, give people a background on you, actually. Give people a background on you, Josh, hmm. before we get into the episode well, me, well, first I have to say, this costume is amazing to breathe in. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I can just kind of sit. It's comfortable. Can, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I had something that I was going to wear coming in. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm chafing way too much. Yeah. See, where I come from, in my gym, we call that sweet and sours, but that's that's a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, Kirby, Kirby's pretty cool. So, like, I don't know, like, when I was in high school... I was kind of like ignored, kind of doing my own thing, but I love jujitsu. And I don't know, I just fell into gaming, played with Kirby, played doing stuff. And I was like, you know what? He's a pretty cool character. And I got to tell you, he is OP. Okay. Yeah. Let me tell you, I was out with yes. this costume. I was out with this costume like last, oh God, last Saturday. Uh, I was up in Westchester with my crazy friend, Nick. Mm -hmm. He dressed as a pilot. He's actually a pilot, but that's a whole nother story. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, allegedly. I mean, if you see how that guy drinks, but... <laughs> I had yeah. this girl, let me tell you, I was telling this to all my friends. I had this girl and she was hot, like hot. <laughs> and I'm just like, I can't, I don't even, okay. So she came up to me and she was like, Hey, nice Jigglypuff outfit. And I was like, Ooh. yeah, I just, I didn't care. I was like, I saw, like, I saw like that twitching. on one of your posts. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll dive, we're going to dive into yeah. his Instagram later, but you posted like a meme of your face. Oh no, everyone thinks it's a Pokemon. Everyone or... will always think Kirby is Jigglypuff, I which <laughs> they I, just can't tell the difference. I, yeah, I know, I know you have a curfew and stuff, but if we talk no, about fine, like man, the yeah. origins of Kirby, like. You know the what, origins of Kirby? No, actually I don't, uh, but I know he's not a freaking Pokemon. <laughs> it's not okay? a Pokemon. Yeah, he's no, like. Nintendo gonna, character, yeah, but no, not, not a Pokemon. He's the OP Nintendo character. He is canonically. And I'm assuming when you're playing Super Smash Bros, you always use Kirby. Well, yeah, I get called a noob for him because he's noob friendly and he's evened out. He's so be, like Kirby's the best though. Yeah. No, yeah. if he existed canonically, <laughs> which is in real life, he'd kill everyone. But like, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I, you know, some people think I have some sexual fetish or I socially identify <laughs> with him. I'm like, you know, one out of two ain't bad. And I'll let you all kind of figure that one out for yourself. Yeah, but yeah. no, no. Like, you know, <laughs> he, everyone has their thing. Yeah. You know, everyone has yours is Kirby. I mean, I like Star Wars stuff and who knows where, where we I'm go. I'm a huge Star Wars fan too. That's awesome, man. Huge, yeah. Huge Star Wars fan. And who fan. knows what we do with those fantasies behind closed doors. But no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah. Yeah. This is supposed to be a G rated podcast, yeah, right? G, yeah. G rated. No, it's, it's only kids watch this one, man. Yeah. But <laughs> But jo yeah, Josh here again. Like I said in the intro, jujitsu expert. You're, you're a black belt in jujitsu. BJJ. Am I? I'm saying it right. Jujitsu. Yeah, yeah jujitsu. Jiu Brazilian jujitsu. Yeah, no. It's Brazilian jujitsu. Jiu yeah. jiu how, so, how long have you been doing that now? So um, I started jujitsu when I was about three years old, and I'm going to turn 28 this Christmas Eve. So nice. reaching the 25th year anniversary. However, I didn't start taking it extremely serious until I was around 15, 16 in high school. You know, when you reach your first identity crisis, you start realizing girls are hot and they realize that you're <laughs> poor and you're like, ah, I got to do something. So, I mean, I like football. I'm a huge football enthusiast. That's why I got to, I got to rep the merch. Yeah. He's got a, he's got a, a Brady Jersey right yep. next to him there. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I've been a huge fan of his. I mean, I think he's a weirdo like in, in life, but I think he's a great football player. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, huge fan of what he's done for the sport. But I tried football. I did wrestling. Um, I did okay, but I wasn't like that really. I was okay. I was kind of like getting by, but like jujitsu is something I really excelled at, and I really started taking it seriously mm -hmm. around fifteen, sixteen. And uh, I remember when I was young, my parents they kind of I had they made me do it when I didn't want to syndrome, whatever you want to call that. Mm -hmm. But I. 
I didn't want to do it as much. And I'm thankful for my parents. They pushed me into it. But my mom and dad, they kind of were very, <laughs> they had an interesting mindset. They said, Josh, we're not trying to vicariously live through you. We don't want you to be some jitsu world champ or whatever. But you're growing up. You're not playing with Matchbox. You're playing with Kirby's. You're wearing colorful shirts. <laughs> They're um, worried. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I'm as straight as the pole I dance on. Let me get it. Let, let's get that. I like women. In fact, a lot. I've done a lot of like really crazy stuff for women. Like we can dive into We're going to dive into that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have some yep. questions with so, that too. No. No, I'm straight. I'm straight as anything. But no, like <laughs> my parents noticed it was a little questionable and they said, look, if you don't learn how to defend yourself and fight, you're going to grow up to be mm -hmm. somebody's bitch. So mm -hmm. you have to do jujitsu. And they, they made me do it. And I begrudgingly did it as a kid. But now I'm so thankful because I can walk around places and I could probably wear this stuff like out later at night when I'm smoking hookah. Yeah. And if someone gives me problems, I'm just going to look at them and be like... What are you going to do? You like, can kick their ass. It's so funny you mentioned that because I remember the first time I met you, which we'll, we'll get into that too. It, again, it, we, it was like a little a free session you gave the some of us a church at Dauntless. And I remember like when I dove deep into your Instagram and seeing you wear Kirby, I told Gilbert, I was like, you know what's funny is like no one can even make fun of him because he could kick their ass. <laughs> like no one can even like roast him for the Kirby shirts because like he, he can hold his own and like all to you, man, like you're living your life, you're doing your yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's just like, so like I said, uh, he's pretty cool. He's pretty OP and yeah. the plush, he's pretty comfy and it's something cool. And in the community, you know, they're promoting all this pornography and drugs and, mm -hmm. and steroids and all this crazy stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm out here promoting a plush toy, a Kirby, and you know, some, yeah. people, some people love it. Some people give me problems. I'm like, I don't know what kind of people you want. Like, <laughs> it's like your staple at this point. I mean, like, have you seen anyone else rep a Nintendo character in, in your jujitsu journeys? Not really. I, I saw a low level bare knuckle boxing match. Some dude was wearing Kirby shorts, and I'm like, this. Who do you think you are? Yeah, I'm like, who do you think you are? I'm like, oh my god, he's stealing my thing. I'm like, but I gotta, but it, you know. It's, it's not going to get that far with someone like that. I'm, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. And again, so going back to your parents, so they got you into jujitsu now, mainly because, I mean, both of your parents are black belts, correct? Am I wrong yes. there? They're no, both... no, no. My, my mom is a is a black belt. She's the on the Filipina side. Wow. She was originally from Cebu. My, my mom is from Cebu. That's yep. so funny. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Last time I was in Philippines, it was a couple years ago, but I was basically living, practically living there by myself. I was there for a couple months, got on a plane all by myself, just... Just curious, there. you know where in Cebu? Like, the um, so she, so when she I went, in the city or province? Province. So when I went oh, to Cebu, I was staying in Mandawi and next to okay. Cebu City. Um, okay. For those who don't know, or a map illiterate, which are most Americans, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about you, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they, they, you all can look it up, but like um, Mandawi City, it's a nice, it's a nice place. Mm -hmm. The hotel was staying at was about seventeen dollars a night for a five star hotel wow. called the Maayo. Very, very nice hotel. Wow. Um, I took where she lives is because we did a trip to her island. It's about a three and a half hour car ride to the southern tip of Cebu known as Hagnaya. Okay. You then take the ferry, which is a big boat for those who also don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about an hour boat ride down to the island known as Santa Fe. And on Santa Fe, it's kind of a party island, but you got to catch it at the right time. Mm. It's not Palawan. Palawan's the huge party yeah, island. Yeah, yeah. That's where all like the crazy people go, which more stories on that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I was there too. But um no, Santa Fe was was there, and then we went to the market in Santa Fe. You take a smaller boat, and you go about another 45 minutes to an hour to a chain of seven islands, and she's the second to last. Um, oh and gosh, the I island, love this. <laughs> yeah, no, the island is called Duong because, to my knowledge, there was a rare species of bird that went extinct that would go Duong. They were a flightless bird. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. they, they, they name it just like the Pokemon, whatever they're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, and actually we use that island all the time to promote – now, this is going to come out of left field, mm. but to promote why uh, you need natural predators, and uh, I like to use this, why we need bullies in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people bring, are going to bring, people bring are gonna, bullying back. Because if, if bullies didn't <laughs> exist, first of all, I wouldn't be as good as jiu-jitsu as I am. That's mm -hmm. number one. Okay, but – yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying, you know, I condone bullying. I just, I just think it's funny. Um, mm -hmm. And a school dominated by nerds will self implode on itself. Yeah. So <laughs> we use this island as an example all the time because there were a bunch of um, birds there and they had no natural predator. Mm. So, I mean, now the island has been civilized. There's houses there, but it used to be a lush tropical uh, island mm. and it's sistering island or brothering island or whatever is now this desolate wasteland because the same thing happened mm. there's like no life on it it was a lush tropical island it was full of these birds they were flightless so they couldn't really go anywhere and again this is just a story i'm told no natural predator they kept having sex and populating and going crazy and <laughs> eating all the resources and then resorted to homosexuality and then died off Wow. And started resorting also to cannibalism and died off. And that was basically <laughs> it. And 
So I was like, wow, is, every, yeah. is everyone writing this down? By the way, we, we I didn't expect a, yeah a history lesson on the birds there. That's great. Well, I can oh, give yeah. you more history lessons. I can talk to you about <laughs> Datu Lapu Lapu. I did I did some crazy crazy stuff. How how often how often uh, have you been to the Philippines? How often do you go? So when I was a kid, around ten years old, I think 10, 11 was my first trip. But like mm. every other year, I would go for the summer. My <clears> parents would go, and we would there for about three months at a time. Okay. Now, Around when I turned like 22, 23, mm-hmm. I flew there by with my brother to meet up with my parents, but then I kind of went off on my own. Okay. Um, about three, four years ago was the last time I was there because the whole COVID thing threw everyone like off. It right. was right before, it was in 2019. Yeah, so I was there in 2019. Year, yeah. yeah, that was the last time I was there. So yeah. it was actually about five years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. So if Thanos snapped, you know. <laughs> right, right. I think I was there in the beginning of 2019. Yeah. Yep. I yep. was there, Manila and in Cebu, but kind of went back and forth there. Um, but yeah, okay, so mom's from Cebu, and so who was into jujitsu first, mom or dad? Like, who got who so, into what? That's a crazy story. So, my dad met my mom in Philippines, um, okay, when he was over there. Was your dad in Navy or something like that? Was that how it went? So, the he usual was pri- private, <laughs> private contractor. So, you know, those, okay. those goons you see John Wick kills off, like, yes. as like those security goons, yeah, yeah, he was one of those security goons, cool, you know, okay. back in the yeah. day. Um, he would work for some, uh, you know, local warlord or something guarding his territory. He never nice. really got into detail. It sounds a lot cooler than it is. It was much more simple. Yeah. And his day job, apparently, he was a hotel phone receptionist, something like that. Wow, what a <laughs> I don't, wow, day I don't, and night. I don't know the, the, <laughs> the, the fine details, but like when he was over there, he was basically learning from someone who goes by the name of Tuhan Leo Tigahi. And he's pretty, Holy shit. He's pretty big in the uh, Hollywood world because... Um, the art that he teaches, its original name is Pakiti Tershitz, the Filipino knife defense, self-defense yeah, art, or yeah. empty hands versus knife. However, it goes by as the word Kali in Hollywood. They say Kali, the art of Filipino Kali. Okay. Right? Yeah. That's what they call it. And so for any Forged and Fire fans, like I'm a huge fan in the show Forged and Fire, um, one of the judges on there, Doug Markaida, he doesn't know how to make the weapons. He uses the weapons. And um, I don't know if you've ever seen the show. He's a judge on this show. It's a mm. pretty big show. It's on Netflix. Um, I believe it was on Nat Geo or Discovery. It's a reality show about contestants forging blades. And what I'll show everyone here, um, yeah, they, they are a family business. Dauntless BJJ here in... We're actually five minutes down the road. If, yeah, they're yeah. really close to my house. Yeah, yeah. we're super close. Yep. Yeah, it's here in Newark, Delaware. Well, that was me as a purple belt. So that was yeah, me. Yeah. That was me years ago. <laughs> Yeah, that's then, that's yeah. my mom. That's one of our kid students years ago. She won a samurai oh. sword at a Naga tournament. And that's they had the group photo here. Yeah, that, that was years ago. See, I'm just a purple belt in that photo. So that and was, your brother's an orange belt. Yeah, was an orange who belt. I'm curious, who was who ago. took more likely to between you and your brother was like, oh yeah, I want to do jujitsu. Like, were you more excited? Was he more excited? Like, so my dad he. The thing is, you know, when you have a first child, you don't know what the hell you're doing with your first child. You yeah. know, God knows <laughs> if I have a first child. I'm probably going to chain him to a damn school. And then when mm-hmm. he turns 20, I'm going to drop him off at a old girls Catholic college with a bag of condoms and be like, all right, kid, all right, kid, you, you'll find your way home. Do your thing. Do your thing. Do, do yeah, your yeah, thing, yeah, kid. Do your thing. You know how to fight. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. All right. Right. Yeah. That's, so, that's going to answer a lot of questions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> that's just, that's how I look at it. Right. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. But with him, you know, he, I, I will say they weren't abusive. Some people would say yeah. this is abusive. I, I can't do snowflakes or cancel culture. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if you want to get into that, yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I lose my shit. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, with my, my parents, they, they did make me do it. And the, the thing is I progress faster than your average bear at a certain time, but mm-hmm. then I burn, I had a burnout phase where I kind of took off. So I started when I was three and, when I say 25 years of being a part of jitsu, but in terms of religiously training, yeah. probably like 10 to 15 years because mm-hmm. I had a burnout phase when I was like kind of reaching like 10, 11, 12, 13, somewhere around there where I didn't do any of that. I kind mm-hmm. of just stayed away from it because they really pushed me hard into it. But then when I naturally came back to it, the skills were still there. My body just had to acclimate. That's good. No, My no, brother, because cool. he's the second child, they're more neutral towards him. So they kind of just let him take to it naturally. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, they just yeah, yeah. let him take to it naturally. And he kind of just uh, fell into the sport. And he is doing like, I, let me, let's get something. I love my brother, mm-hmm. but I still kick his ass. All right. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I'm still daddy in that gym. Okay. So I still, <laughs> I, I saw st- it. No, I, yeah. I saw, I saw it. Yeah. You yeah. guys, you guys are going at it for but, sure. Yeah. But at his age, he's doing better than me than I mm-hmm. was at my age. And I'm not one of those brothers. That's, How old is he? How old is your brother? He's, he just turned 21. Okay. So nice. yeah. we're going to take that MFR out to the bar, earn him his wings. Mm-hmm. That's non-negotiable. Yeah. Buying him a shot and put it in a funnel, stick it up. Is it like <laughs> <laughs> non-negotiable, but that's a whole nother conversation but no like um 
he is doing better than me than when I was his age, basically. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not one of those mm -hmm. siblings that is super jealous or, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There's envious, of course, that comes in like, oh man, I wish yeah. I could have accomplished that. But no, like I get emotionally happy for him when I see him That's cool. succeed at life. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, I get like teary eyed, especially like when I see him win competitions, especially our very last professional grappling event at arena, um, team Dauntless went three and oh, so I That's have it awesome, all, yeah. I have it all posted on my Instagram. <clears throat> I was going to say, so I was going to pull up uh, Josh's Instagram here and yeah, you have a video here with your brother. <laughs> oh yeah. Just another, what, like uh, from your thousands of gold medals, right? Yeah. So my brother, uh, got quickest submission and fight of the night, mm. but he has a gym rival who goes by the name of Peter King. They're really good friends, but they train together also and compete against each other all the time. And mm -hmm. he always loses to him in the finals. Me, I fought a weight class below me and then I fought a weight class above me. They didn't have someone at my weight and mm -hmm. I double golded in both. And oh, nice. yeah, one of the videos where I won it looks like me. Is it one of these? Oh, that's, no. that's arena. Yes. That's my last, my very last grappling match. That is a professional, uh, grappling event. So I just want to show everyone real quick too. Again, like, I mean, for any viewers who are curious, jo see Josh in action here, jujitsu action. Yep. My, uh, the, the best part of the video, if you want to go to my Instagram, cause I have a better cropped out video than that. My dad, okay. to keep the, uh, publicity of the school safe to keep things neutral he crops out the ending but if you mm. watch the ending of the post fight interview uh i a lot of the producers at the the organization liked it but some of the contestants that were there were like oh you don't take jitsu seriously and i'm like "Ooh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. i mean if you got a problem with that you know we can always fight right yeah, yeah see yeah. how serious <laughs> i take it maybe, maybe you're right maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong oh that i love that post this is cool I love that you bring the plushie with you. <laughs> Ladies, I can go the distance. Ladies, I can go the distance. You, at the end of the day, I've done jitsu so long that my mindset is, you know, love you. You can be my best friend, hate you, worst mm. enemy. When you when we're on the mat, it's it's very cerebral, nothing personal. I cannot stand, and I'm getting off tangent if I talk about this, but I cannot stand people who take jujitsu way too seriously and way well, too what's personal an example off the mats what, off the mats. what's an example of taking it too seriously off the mats i'm curious um for example if someone like comes at you and basically <clears throat> makes fun of you and you're like hey man i do jujitsu i'm like uh, you faggot i'm like yeah. no dude. <laughs> like i was at the gym the other day and like there was this the worst ones are like blue belts mm that are just newly promoted blue belts or like close to getting their purple belt because they are good. They're thrashing all the up and you coming. You got a lot of cocky people. Yeah. A lot of cocky people. We call yeah. them the gatekeepers, right? They're all good. You sure. know, they're thrashing all the, 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 the up and comers, but they get trashed by the high level guys. Yeah. Um, a blue belt, just a white belt that knows some shit. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. really all it is. But like, <laughs> I heard some guy at the gym the other day. He's like, Hey, he was arguing with someone. He's like, jujitsu is not gay. Come on. And I'm like, of course it's gay. It's totally gay. <laughs> I'm like, jujitsu is exactly like sex, but with clothes on. It's 100%. <laughs> he looked at me. He's like, yeah, like he was going to like fuck me up. And I'm like, uh, well, if you do, I was like, I'll bend down. I'm like, what are you going to do? Sit on your ass? This is usually what they do. He's like, he's like, I bet you never train a day in your life. I'm like, no, that's why I'm in the gym. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the problem is that people misinterpret a lot of my Instagram. Um, I love to troll with people. Mm -hmm. I love like my Instagram hundred yeah. percent troll. It's not who I really am. Sure. Um, I don't drink that much. Um, I do like to dance and I do go out, but I don't really party as hard as I show it. Mm -hmm. I take my training. That's fascinating. Cause yeah. I, I, whenever I'm watching this, I'm yeah. like, Oh, he's like a p big party guy. That's genuinely what I thought. Oh, I love yeah, to yeah. go out and dance and sure. socialize, but yeah. the drinking aspect, I don't do as much as I promote. Sure. And yeah, when yeah, I, yeah. I do go out a lot, but I also like leave early. I don't like stay till like closing time. Sometimes mm -hmm. I do. Yeah, but, yeah, no, you uh, gotta know when to leave. Yeah, yeah I'm the same way. No, yeah, but yeah. Th the thing is, like, I take my training on the mats extremely seriously. Yeah, off the mats, good. it's all a joke. Yeah, like it has to be. Because you, you do, yeah. do you have a pretty serious like training regimen? You'd say because well, uh, a question I do want to ask too is because when, when you're training, you do nine miles of running. I see that on the treadmill whenever you post that, or unless that's a troll. <laughs> I mean, I, I, what can I tell you? I just look at people work out and I record them, you know, and I, I say that I do it, you know, back when I was <laughs> exercising, yeah, yeah. Do, doing all the good stuff, right? Yep, yeah. Yep, give, yep. That's what's giving you the energy. Yep. But are, are you running the actual nine miles though? Like, I mean, that's on the treadmill. 
I'm well, sorry. I would go swimming, but the problem is, you know, I can't really do that because yeah. it's never been more than 30 minutes since I last ate. So such a fat fuck, but you know, that's no dude, this guy is of, <laughs> of, of fitness. Oh, so what's your, what's your training? Like, I'm curious in the day in the life of Josh training, like, so, do you have a strict diet and stuff like that? Or so honestly, it's portion control is <clears throat> the big thing. The big mm -hmm. killer for me, what ballooned me up was I do have a bit of a beer belly at some times, but mm. Occasional drinking on the weekends, but nothing crazy. It's the late night eating. Like I get yeah. done work like around <laughs> nine, nine thirty at night, and mm -hmm. I am exhausted. I want to go home, and my mom, being Filipina, she's got food on top of food. Like who knew you can cook a pan on top of a pan? Well, you're Filipina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know how yeah, it goes. it's it's. And so you much have food. to eat if she if I don't eat, she'll kick my ass. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and she could because she's a black. Yeah, girl, she right? could. So that's. I'm scared. Of Has my there mom. ever been, uh, well, con since there's four of you in the house, all new jujitsu, has it, I mean, I'm sure not really, but I mean, with your dad at least, has there ever actually been like something actually used in a real moment? <laughs> I'm curious. Hopefully that's not an invasive question. Uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, he would hit us. He would choke us. <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he's definitely rolled with me and practice moves, but I'll tell you what my parents really did as mm. punishment when I was kids. Mm. And, um, if there's any parents watching your podcast, this is straight evil, but it's going to give them <laughs> such good ideas because as a parent, I got to tell you, this worked on me when I was a sophomore in high school, I was a, a kind of a, whatever normal ABC student, but one of my classes, I was always flunking, almost mm -hmm. flunking. Cause I didn't care. I didn't really care. But mm -hmm. my junior year, I turned it up. So my mom did is she said, well, jujitsu is non-negotiable. You kind of have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I can't spank you because you get beat up like when you get thrown around and, you know, we enjoy it. So it's like you're kind of used to that. So what my parents did is mostly my mom. And this was rough. She would delete. Are you a gamer? Oh, uh, I used to be. Not, she not as would much delete anymore. save data off video games. Damn, man. It was rough, man. Damn. That's pretty bad. Oh yeah. What what game? Like what, So I remember example. my um I got this That's the game worst. Nintendo DS. I got uh Mario Hoops three on three. Oh, I don't know if you remember that. Shit. And I was really getting good with the stylus and I was <laughs> yeah, I unlocked yeah, yeah. um they even had a collage with a uh, Final Fantasy or a collab with Final Fantasy where you had Final Fantasy characters in there that you can unlock. Now yeah, yeah. you had to do like this special mission, and this is before cheat codes, this is before smartphones, and you could look up the internet. I mean, cheat codes <laughs> existed, but they didn't have like you can just like cheat your way into this this was like yeah. legit grind that shit had yeah, yeah, to yeah. actually and even nowadays you know how hard gamers have to grind mm -hmm. for some of that stuff yeah so to unlock one of these characters i had to like play this level that was kind of like a a vegas style gambling level the slots had to organize right i had to earn a certain amount of points i had to have money had to be at a certain time of day mm -hmm. like certain day of the week mm -hmm. i had to set the calendar on the thing and then it would know <laughs> that i set the calendar on the thing like it was stupid and so i finally unlocked this character and then I came home and I was playing the game too much, had some bad grades, and my mom deleted it. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I'm more surprised. She just knew how to do it. Like that's more like shock. Because parents, sometimes parents aren't tech savvy like that. But there's, she knew. She was like, when she's like, a, you, you like this shit, huh? I'm going to remove it. I'm going to delete it. It sucks when there's a button on the Nintendo DS that says oh, delete. That <laughs> yeah, just yeah. says delete like right there. So she yeah, just hits yeah. setting and it says delete the game. And yeah. I'm like, and then what she does, it's so mafia like after she deleted the game, she doesn't take it away. She's like, here you go. Get a, get an A next time. Yeah. And I, I rather she take the game away. Take the game away. But yeah, now, no. now you have to sit with the fresh, like, yeah, you. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's yeah. gone. It's all <laughs> Everything's gone. Everything's just gone. Gone. And it took me forever. No, no. That is like and it was soul the day, crushing. Oh, yeah. No. It was the day before, too. We were like supposed to go to this thing with some high school people and like brag about all the characters we unlocked. Oh, dude. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 I was. For any parents watching, though, don't get any funny ideas. But yeah, I was that, that say, is a crazy now, punishment. That's a unique punishment. Oh, yeah. Say. That's, that's, it was bad. It was really, really bad <laughs> it's funny to think yeah like in a jujitsu family that's what they have to resort to well yeah, yeah they to, can't to, really they can't really beat me pain, up or, pain's not really an yeah, option huh? yeah i mean they can tech like she can break my arm but it's like we're used to that so it's like yeah no like that's funny i said it pain isn't an option so they had this to come up an option and it was a lot also too like it's very stress-free she didn't have to yell she didn't have to scream she yeah. didn't have to say she would just do like this with her hand and i'd be like i don't want to give it to you and she's like well, then now I'll break your legs and take it from you anyway. And so I'm like, now I, I kind of... Uh, your mom being Filipino, is she the type that, I mean, going to go... Because I kind of want to dive deep into this a little bit too with your your uh, relationship life. I mean, is she the type to also be like, what, when are you going to give me uh, grandchildren and stuff like that? My I mean, mom would be like that. And I have a girlfriend now, so everything's congr covered. Con congratulations Everything's you, covered man. on there. <laughs> so no, I'm, But for I you, mean, you're a single guy. Yeah, I'm yeah. single as a Pringle. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's... <clears throat> The thing is with, okay, uh, I'm, if, if what I, can you say, <laughs> yeah, see, 
if I dive into great detail about how I truly feel about women in this country, in this area, it's mm-hmm. going to definitely divide <laughs> viewers because, yeah, and yeah. you, you'll lose 50% of them, but you'll gain uh, the support from the 50% you do keep. What, so, what a guest to have back everybody yeah. on the first one back. I love I, this. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, so, yeah, I, say will, what you- <laughs> I will stay politically neutral because okay. I also have a job and a reputation yeah. to maintain. Yeah, 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 100%. Now, I'm all about equality. I love women. You know, I love women too much. Actually, mm-hmm. I've done a lot of crazy stuff uh, mm-hmm. to get girls. The problem is when I was younger, I used to put girls on a pedestal. Mm-hmm. And that, that was the issue. And a lot of my friends told me that. Um, I don't know. For me, it's the biggest problem trying to find a girl is well, when I went to Philippines, let me put it this way. I, I'm Clark Kent. Okay. Living sure. on yeah. Krypton. hundred yeah, percent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or Kal-El <laughs> living on Krypton in America. Yes. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. I went to Philippines, I was Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Superman. Yeah. The only kryptonite was the plane ticket <laughs> on the way home. I and mean, that was it. Yeah. Was yeah. Freaking Superman. Yeah. Like I'd have to try. I mean, I'd I bet be... you were a stud, man. You were a stud in the Philippines. Huh? So there were producers <laughs> hitting me up. They wanted me to like do these action movies and stuff. Wow. I had jiu-jitsu tournaments contacting wow. me, but I wasn't there for jiu-jitsu or movie work and wow. sadly and or humanitarian stuff. I was there soul searching and to party and yeah. To meet people, and I met a lot of women, and I have a lot of crazy stories. I almost got killed over a chick one time in a very dangerous area in Metro Manila. Really? If you want, I can dive into it. It's hilarious. Please do. I so, mean, what if you can? Yeah, if you can. <laughs> no, no. So, like, there, there's an army in Philippines called the NPA. It means New People's Army. They're not as dangerous as they used to be. Now they just drink and kind of hide out. Army? But, is it like a gang? No, it's like... What? um. It's a or is it an actual army? It's it's a rebel battalion force, kind of like okay. A, a, it's like a cultish group of army people yeah, within yeah, the yeah. country, something like that. It's not as dangerous as it used to be, but mm. I was in this area in Metro Manila. So for those who don't know, Manila is the capital of Philippines. Yeah. Um, there's a city called BGC, which is um, Bonifacio Global City, and she and this uh, is the girl that got you in trouble. Well, her cousin did. So I was at cousin this, okay, I was okay, at this okay. bar. I was at this bar with her and we were dancing amongst other things, mm-hmm. which I won't get into detail. But we were having a blast. And then what ended up happening was she had her cousin come up. And I can't speak Tagalog as fluently as I can English, but I mm. do know a few words to get by here and there. Yeah, yeah. And I remember <clears throat> looking, I says, that's your cousin. She said, oh, right. Oh, is yes. Yeah. And I was like, ah, indeed, uh. right? No, like. <laughs> I think I said that right. Yeah. I was like, bang it up, mataba. It means fat and ugly. <laughs> bang it is ugly. Mataba is fat. So I said, bang it up, mataba. <laughs> Which actually is ugly and fat. Yeah. And she laughed because mm-hmm. Filipinos are cool people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this dad, in broken English, he was just sitting here like this with his hands. like His one hand was free and his other hand was crossed. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I want you to dance with my daughter, which was this girl's cousin. Mm. And this guy, this ripped bouncer. Which is bouncer, the same girl you called. Like, yeah. Fat and, ugly. <laughs> and this bouncer was just with his hands behind his back like this, just looking at me like, just smiling like that. And I'm like, okay and i said no and then this girl was like telling me she's like you really should dance oh, with my cousin geez. you really should dance oh, with my geez. cousin so she wanted me to dance with her cousin again and i'm like no i don't want to do it and so basically i saw thank god the disco light just hit in the right place at the right time maybe god was looking out for me i don't know it just bounced off this glinting thing under this dude's armpit and okay. it just hit my eye okay and i saw a hammer cocked back for those who don't know it was a firearm yeah and it was like as soon as I saw that, I just was like, okay. And I saw him. The just dad? Like, the yeah, dad the, the, dad, the, the dad, dad. The dad was just sitting there smiling. And he smiled yeah. at me. His teeth were missing. And the girl was like begging me. She's like, please just dance. As soon as I saw that, I, I looked at the bouncer and he was just staring at me like this and just smiling the whole time with his hands behind his back. Yo, bro, I got on that stage. That's actually the origin story of how I became a not a good dancer, but like dancing. So like, what is on the fucking salsa? With yeah, her? I was like, I was like, this shit is fun. I didn't know the floss existed. She's I like I like doing the floss, but no, I was I was I was like I was I was yeah, I was yeah, doing yeah, I was yeah, doing yeah. it all. I was like, oh my god, like whoa, yo, like I was like I was grabbing her hips. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh my god, you know, dude. ride her like a horsey, bro. Like it's cool, you know, whatever you want. You know how long did that? So as you're dancing, is the dad pointing the gun at you? No, as soon as I started dancing, the the dad, the dad was like kind of like smirked and was like, "He's all right." And I'm I'm not even making this up. He pulled the rugrat and just put it on the table and was and was like and was just like he looked at the bouncer like that and the bouncer with his hands behind his back was all sad 
And behind him, it was like some like sword with nails sticking out of it or something. He just put it back on a mantle. And I was like, oh my gosh, dude, they were ready to murder your ass. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm hoping that it that wasn't dance, the case. The, the dance saved your life. Yeah. The it was a very dangerous area in Philippines. Like over there, like foreigners get abducted for like money. They don't oh care about you. Oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. Healthcare system. Let me tell you, when I was training in Philippines, see when, when you came with us, you had to sign a waiver before yeah. we started training with you over there. There's no, there's nothing. There's no, uh, wait, there's no malpractice insurance. There's no yeah. suing people for nothing. Um, you just got to wait in the really long line, pay six dollars to wave a fishbone in front of your face then you're cured <laughs> and i gotta tell you when i had an injury and i only paid six dollars in copays i'm like dude piece of shit third world healthcare rocks <laughs> until i walked out and i saw the line of people carrying blood in their own plasma holding their intestines like in their uh, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'm like Ooh, i don't know about that yeah i'm like never mind i'm like <laughs> yeah, 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 maybe yeah. america really is still the greatest country we have <laughs> So going back yeah. to that, the dad, so again, the dad had to be part of whatever the, the what's the name of that army you mentioned? Um, Did you get confirmation that he was no, part of I had the, no clue. I so just knew, just, I like, just knew the NPA was like, they're not as dangerous to my knowledge. They weren't as dangerous as they were back in the nineties. Okay. They're kind of just hobbling around drinking wow. and just kind of live living in their moments kind of deal. I'm guessing that this dad was probably some ex-military that was just carrying a gun. Maybe was drunk and dance with my daughter. Dance with my yeah, daughter. You called or, her ugly. Did he hear you call her ugly? Did no. he hear that part? Oh, oh no! I have perfect bar <laughs> etiquette, and I know how to talk to where people don't hear me yeah, and yeah, people yeah, yeah. can. Yeah. That's that's actually the biggest pet peeve of mine. The biggest. I tell that to any future upcoming date who would like to hang out with me, or or not. <laughs> I tell us. I, I was gonna my, say, well, when this story's in done, I, I like. Well, can you pitch like who are you looking? Are, are you looking for a relationship right now? Like, well, what is what is a Josh Sacchetti looking yeah. for? I did this for I did this for Geo the last time he was on the podcast. Because yeah, okay. I, I know in my single days I was like, I need a platform. So if there's anything, if hey, if you want to pitch it, put on your Tinder profile or Grinder. I don't no. <laughs> Tinder. You know, hey, tell the people well, so, what is a Josh Sacchetti looking for. Honestly, like drama free consistency as a start. Mm -hmm. So I'm not looking yeah. for a one night stand. If in layman's terms, a multiple night stand would be nice, but it doesn't mean I just see her for like a month or a few weeks and then still yeah. leave. Yeah. I would like it to be um, casually consistent and then let it naturally formulate into a relationship. Yeah. You know, you don't 100%. buy a car before you <clears throat> test drive it. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? 100%. Um, but I would love to like something to formulate naturally into a relationship. The problem is everyone's putting a title on things. Everyone wants a yes to this. Yes to that. I'm not ready for commitment or marriage, but I'm not, not ready. You know what I mean? I need, I need that in between state, uh, stasis where I can go in and kind of test the waters and in be all, committed with someone, you know, uh, what's your girlfriend past? Like how many girlfriends have you had officially? You would say girlfriends, girlfriends. Yeah. One. One? Okay. Nice. 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 Um, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, give you the teary eyed story, but you know, I walked in and she was cheating on me and, uh, Oh damn dude. I'm so sorry. Damn, it happens. Oh, it was a lot shit. of fun. It, it threw, it, it gave me, I'm glad. Okay. I'm not glad it happened and yeah. I don't wish that on anybody, but I looked at it from a good sense as it gave me a reality check on life quickly, how to put mm -hmm. things in perspective. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. this is what happened. This is, this is how we deal with it. Yeah. And we move on to the next. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. just, that's kind of where I went from there. But in <clears throat> right. terms of finding the right girl, you know, I would, I would always like that. Um, I would like someone to be, I would say consistent in my life, you know? Yeah. yeah or I can, I can tell you the, the craziest story I had in Philippines. That's also something I <clears throat> used for my skit. Now this was a hundred percent true. Okay. And this story was kind of nutty. I mean, it's, this was, I was in Philippines by myself. And we'll probably tell this story and then wrap it up because. Oh, my bad. No, yeah. no, no, you're fine. We'll tell, we'll tell this story and kind of ra start wrapping things up after oh, this. Oh yeah. No, if yeah, you have yeah. any questions, but yeah, this, this would make part of the good bit. This, mm -hmm. I was at this airport bar in um, Cebu when I landed, I was going to go to this. I went to this spontaneous skydiving venture. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. girl from Glasgow, Scotland ran into me and. She's like, uh, I remember oh, she was drinking or something. I, I said a curse word or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, sorry. And she's like, we invented it or whatever. And I don't know. She's trying to, I'll try to do my best Scottish accent. Yeah. And she just kind of looked at me. She's like, uh, what do you do? And I'm like, what do I do? I'm, I'm a fighter. She's like, I had to fight at a boy. Do you pretend your right to be a certified man here? I'm like, what the, f what the fuck? I was like, you kill me, Braveheart. What are you, yeah, yeah, right, right. What, are you what are you saying? She's like, are you a certified man here? You know, it, you expose your private areas, oh, private man. areas. Oh. And I was like, man, hair, I have hair, my private. Oh, man, whore. She was calling me oh, a man, man whore. I was, uh, yeah, you knew. <laughs> like, like, yeah, took, hair. yeah, she's like, yeah, that man had it. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. no, no, because she thought I was talking about WWE. And she was real drunk. 
she <laughs> pulled my pants down in the bar and she's like, Oi, drop the fish, yeah, our son. <laughs> Scottish woman in the Philippines in the she bar. Was, she was vacationing there. Vacationing in the bar. bar. We went to this spawn. I think she's married now, but um, her name her name's Driscoll. But yeah, she. we did this spontaneous skydiving event. I remember I was on this plane and the guy that was on there, he's like, I'm going to kick you off in three. He's like, three. And then mm. I was actually at a date last Saturday telling this story to a chick before we were making out. <laughs> so I didn't know that this story would actually like help me score some points here, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was great. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Dude, you've lived some, some crazy life stories there, man. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but what, what ended up happening was, um, yeah. So we, <laughs> we were falling and they kind of tell you in skydiving lesson to pull the chute at a certain, cause we were tandem. She was, uh in front of me, I was in the back. You have to pull the chute after a certain amount of feet. If you pull it too low, obviously splat, but if you pull it too much, it's going to be a long ass descent. Mm -hmm. She got a little worried and pulled it a little too soon. Mm -hmm. So when the chute pulled, there were two ropes I was holding on each side and I was kind of guiding like this. And it was going to be about 30 to 40 minute descent on the way down. And the sunset and the weather was absolutely beautiful. Uh Right. Yeah. I'm stimulated. The blood has rushed to my nether regions because of the way my body has been falling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? She's right here in front of me. Yeah. What what she, happened? <laughs> she thought it would be a good idea. Shut up. So she In I'm, air? Yeah. So we were like, I was like holding it and she was just so I mean, it was probably the best 30 minute descent I've ever experienced in in skydiving. I probably will never have another good skydiving experience, anything like that. Did you finish before finishing? (laughs) Um, Well, because of the way the thrust and the wind were going, we actually landed in a trash compactor, which is (laughs) not full of like ramen noodles or like normal house trash. It was full of like concrete and, and cardboard and you fell in a trash compactor. Yeah. Yeah. When we, when we landed, we kind of like tilted into it and we kind of just finished in there and then we had to climb out and brush this stuff off before the trash truck came in and yeah, yeah, yeah. lifted it up and the skydiving instructor is really mad you horn dog he's like you <laughs> you fell in the wrong zone you're supposed to fall in the grass we, like, we needed a place to yeah, yeah i was like hey man look you go i, I was young i was stupid this yeah. was years ago this was yeah, yeah, about yeah. five years ago so obviously nothing like this happens to me now i'm, I'm a boring individual <laughs> don't say that no no, no. i'm sure you're still <laughs> no. living a good life yeah, yeah yeah so that was probably the craziest amongst many if you ever i don't know if you ever want to have me back but if you ever do 100 percent, if you ever you do back. want to have me back i can dive into because now now other knowing stories because again I, I, I before having you on again i was just like the jujitsu background and i was like oh maybe we'll talk about the kirby stuff but knowing the the stuff you've been through man again like, this is years ago audience yeah, 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 this yeah, yeah years yeah. and years Josh ago just talking about his past this yeah, is my yeah. past he's a responsible adult a teacher at jujitsu he literally yeah a lot yeah. of my friends know my past not like i'm out here committing crimes but it's like i was yeah, living yeah. my best life in there yeah. what do you do so i mean jujitsu of course what do you do full-time what, what's your day job like do you i, mean, I teach ju- so my full-time day job is and night job is jujitsu and okay. i help i help with marketing i help with uh the marketing google adwords campaign you know promoting the school which is cool uh i don't know after what i was talking about today if it's great to shout out dauntless but i'm like obviously <laughs> i am a legitimate jitsu instructor and yeah, we do have yeah. a great crew everyone loves the gym uh, please come on down to Dauntless. You know what no, I mean? No, I was going to yeah. say, because again, well, well, I mean, I mean, we gave, we gave you a free lesson. You go ahead and you can post that video. I know. I was going to, I'm actually, I have it ready too. So pretty much. <laughs> so I want to say we took a route today that was unexpected, but I'm not upset. I didn't know you were, you did com- com- comedy and I didn't know all those stories you had. We're probably going to have to have you back because again, yeah. th- these podcasts 100%. can only run so long. Yeah. But, um, again, yeah. So me and again, Josh here does jujitsu. He has the belt right next to him. Again, you got the belt at so, which, where, where do you get this, the, this the was, belt and medals? Yeah. This was, yeah. I have the video on YouTube. This was a Naga belt. I took out a 17 year black belt veteran for okay. this belt. And it was a pretty, hold it up real quick for the camera. Yeah. So the camera can see it. Pretty cool fight. That's cool. Next to my lucky green Kirby plush. Yeah. There's my, <clears throat> my Brady Jersey for the bucks and uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, <laughs> uh, Patriots, these medals. So this was right before I went to Nashville, Tennessee last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I went four and and I, uh, uh, I won Gianogi and I was like really kind of emotionally proud of this medal because I was going through a lot of mental stuff. And yeah. it was one of the very few tournaments, both my mom and my dad were both there present live cage, like uh, not cage side, Matt side. Mm. And they watched me go four and against very hard competition. That's and cool. then this medal was for the record setting 
Um, I don't have the medal that where I had sex in between matches. That medal is still in my school. Probably should have that. But this medal is for the record setting 112 minute match I had at the good fight. Mm-hmm. I fought one hour and 52 minutes and I have the longest match for their company organization. And I won. I won in the end. That the last four minutes of that is on YouTube because they would demonetize the hell out of us if we put like a hundred and twelve minute video on that thing. So mm-hmm. No, yeah. Again, dude, again, I'm wishing you the best in all those journeys. I actually downloaded the wrong video. Let me pull it up. But so what I'll say is again, me and me and Josh, we, we met it's funny, I feel like ever since I met everyone at the church, I've just it's been literally recruiting for podcast guests too. Every time I meet someone new, I'm like, Oh, I would love to get them on the podcast and me and Josh met because again he was co- uh, nice enough to let us do a session with him. Oh yeah, let me let over me. there at. God, uh, I'm fat. And then the best way to say it is Dauntless BJJ. Dauntless BJJ and MMA. Dauntless BJJ and MMA, yes, and sir. yeah, that's located here in Newark. And what I'll show everyone here is pure fear because genuinely. So I'm gonna tell you what I was thinking in this moment. Who is this douchebag? I'm looking at this. <laughs> I'm like, man, can you like take ten pounds off my my gut and put it on my ass? Well, was well, the CGI it. Yeah, dude, I'll tell you, I was going through a lot of fear here because oh, I wink. I was like, I was like, this dude is gonna kick my ass. But then little do I know, I was like, okay, wait, no, he's gonna be a good sport. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> So so let's let's show I, everyone. I, I I didn't mean to yell at you. I just I thought no, no, it'd no. be funny. The moment I realized what you're doing, I'm like, this is genius. I was just like, oh, because oh, oh. I was like, I don't know how serious. I was like, oh, okay. You're, you're pretty good, you know. You you. you I'm have... trying. See, look look at that form. Look at that form, guys. Yeah. I don't really know what I'm doing. See, look, J- Josh taught. See, this is how good Dauntless is. Everybody, they can teach you in one day how to take down. A teacher is a teacher sensei. Do you guys go by sensei there? Or? Uh, just call me Josh. Honestly, Josh, we're not Josh. a cult. There's a lot of jiu-jitsu no... gyms that are cults. We're very chill. Nice. See, yeah. you can put this in your 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 SWAT Batman movie, whatever. <laughs> like how you take take down the the crazy antagonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just foreshadowing. We're gonna get yeah. Josh in a lot of projects moving forward. But yeah, you the, look, the... I mean, you look great out there. You know, attractive and great. And I'm just there. Like, nah, dude. Yeah. Again, <laughs> again, if this is any way to show, again, if you if you're ever curious about taking jujitsu, one of you know anything in self defense, Dauntless BJJ uh, MMA. Everybody, go ahead and check it out. We'll link it in the description. Yeah, down no, below, no. Like, but we, yeah, we... have anything you want to talk about with Dauntless, real quick? No. Yeah, um, like... Oh, thank. You. I appreciate that. No, but like we we are a school, and the thing is with jujitsu, I have done it for so long. My goal is I want people to do good. I want people to do well and excel mm-hmm. in jujitsu. All kidding aside, I do take the sp- like I said earlier in the podcast. I do take the sport on the mat extremely, very, very seriously. Mm-hmm. I'm there religiously. I love it even when I hate it. Hate it even when I love it. It's the mm-hmm. same thing. Um, you, but I, when we're off the mat, I like to make it a joke. And the thing is, I don't take it seriously off the mat, which actually helps me take it so much more seriously when I'm on the mat. And mm-hmm. I would love to get you back and your friends. Yeah. And like I yeah. said, come in and I just want people to get good, you know? Yeah. Um, and to anyone that's watching that ever wants to come and try, you know, free trial, come on in, come on in, give it a try, you know, see mm-hmm. if it's for you. Um, the proof's in the pudding. We have wins. You know, we have hundreds and hundreds of matches and wins. I'm not just winning. My brother, who, you know, recently overcame lymphoma, uh, he's a year, you know, wow. beating lymphoma. Yeah. So, awesome. you know, good good for him. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he's out there kicking ass in competition. <clears throat> we have one of our pupils, Dawson's out there kicking ass in competition. We This November 11th, we're going to go to Harvard DeGrace, Maryland for the tournament organization where the medals I'm going for which I'm one, I'm the face. I'm one of the faces of the organization. I have the nice. most wins, the most map time, the most matches. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I think they gave me a coach of the year award too. I, I've just been there so long. We're taking a whole competition team there, lower ranked people. And we're kind of buffing them up into the competition scene, into the competitive scene to basically, you know, what's the, the farthest goal. you've traveled for a match? Philippines. Phil- oh, nice. Okay. So Philippines. And that was, yeah, that yeah, was very it. spontaneous. It was like, kind of yeah. just showed up and it's actually in my hacked Instagram. I was training, uh, with a former UFC fighter who went by the name of Ronaldo D. He okay. was a famous Filipino MMA fighter. I think he's retired now, but I was fighting him when he was known as an alternate, which is if somebody on a UFC card got injured, he was the first guy they would call to replace him. So he was a pretty like high level, high okay. level guy. Nice. So nice. I was I was training with him and I was sparring with him and stuff over there. That's cool. Did a few tournaments, won a few tournaments over there, but nothing crazy, just local level Filipino tournaments. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And again, yeah. So I mean, because I know we we've done a few. I think you, we did two church sessions. I, I went to one of them. But again, for if they do in the future, if anyone's listening to this, because a lot of my friends listen to this, you want to try a jujitsu. Maybe we'll go visit Josh one day and check it out. Yeah, we'll make some content too. I always thought like, well, how cool would it be to like record a visit there and like kind of be silly. We have a jujitsu thing. We're actually trying to start. 
kind of like what you're doing. Mm. It's called Jujitsu Boogaloo. <laughs> Jujitsu Boogaloo. <laughs> Jujitsu Boogaloo. It's funny. My friends uh, came content up with wise it. was like podcast skits. Podcast, or podcast, podcast, and YouTube skits. That's YouTube awesome. videos and podcasts. Yeah, and it's funny because. Once we started doing good, we had a school out of the woodworks. I'm not going to say who because I don't want to throw any shade on anybody. I have no bad Mm -hmm. blood, but I just think it's funny. Uh, They were talking a lot of shit on our school saying we're a belt factory, saying we just hand people belts and we have no sports integrity and stuff like that. But Mm. as the great comedian Ricky Jervis once said, for anyone who don't know his name, you're not doing anything right until someone starts hating on you. So when they they didn't start hating on us until we started winning our competitions. Yeah. So we started winning. They came out and they said all this stuff and I I laughed it off. So one of the videos we were going to try to make for our YouTube uh, channel, which we're starting (laughs) is I have fake hundreds in my car. I was going to give it to one of my friends and he was going to like, can I get one of those black belts? And he just like, you know, whips out the hundreds. And <laughs> yeah, 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 I pull out a brown just bag. Just give him out, yeah. Yeah. He like opens it and then, you know, he gets spiked on his head. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, sorry, all sales are final. Because <laughs> I'm like, here, we give out belts. Like we don't care about the sport or the skill level or the integrity. Mm-hmm. Dude, who gives a shit about this stupid sport? It's yeah. gay anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for that, man. Uh, when, when do you guys plan to get, I mean, you're just brainstorming right now? Yeah, we're, brain, guys, yeah. we're brainstorming. So my friend Eric, uh, he's kind of the one that does what he calls the jiu-jitsu boogaloo lore, mm-hmm. creepy pasta fan base, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> he's got all this crazy equipment you got. I don't even know what you call this thing, but he, whatever this is, is pretty cool yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's got it so he, nice. <laughs> he's gonna start all that stuff and that, that's, I mean is it gonna it's gonna be just all about jujitsu stuff or are you guys talking about whatever on there on um, that podcast you know um, yet, um, so it's probably gonna be making fun of jujitsu making fun of the stereotypes yeah. and you know, that's pretty unique. I mean, I don't know unless I mean you're in the jujitsu world, dude. Yeah, do, no, like there, every, is there podcasts like that already? I mean, there are. They they talk about jujitsu. They talk <clears> about how the training goes, and they kind of keep it lighthearted. But nobody really makes fun of it the way we, we do. So like that could work we, in your favor. We then, went to yeah. this tournament, a really high level tournament, and there was everyone there was so juiced up. I remember yeah. like screaming. I'm like, dude, there's so many steroids in here. I'm getting a contact high on this stuff. <laughs> and like my friends, like, dude, we should totally put that on the podcast. And yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah we, we should do that. And we'll just great. start making fun of like like all these guys on Instagram with their and they may be great jitsu but they're they're intimidating you know like they're yeah. flexing in front of their room like nobody's gonna rob your bowling trophies bro yeah like nobody cares yeah, yeah. like be approachable be fun that's why like i love the kirby thing because mm-hmm. kirby's the og but he's a cute little pink puff ball so unassuming but man dude yeah try and get that started talk to your boys and again if i can help advertise it in any way i, I have two more mics so hey, if you want to come back with even friends, dude, let's let's you'll, rock it you'll, out. You'll do like a double podcast, like a well again, yeah, because I mean I have a space there and I can put someone right here for me. It can be four people I, I, talking. I probably would bring my friend Eric because yeah. he's the only other person that kind of has the same mindset as me. And sure, you'll, yeah. you'll probably get some of the. If you know content. any dude, if you know anyone in that world that's you know wants to again like just get a feel what the podcast world is like and like how things can go, dude, have him on board and then some more content too. He, yeah, he's I one, welcome it. He's one of the funniest people that I know, and together we'll probably make a lot of people spitting you know stuff out their nose <laughs> laughing but um yeah man again again anything you want to promote with dauntless real quick that you want to pitch to people 13 pressbury square newark delaware 19713 that's our address 13 pressbury square newark delaware 19713 right across the vince's sports center off route four for anyone that's local in the area please come on in and i would love to train you get to know you and uh just make you good at jitsu you know that's really it so again everyone yeah again if you ever wanted to try out jujitsu go ahead and hit the them up. Uh, I'm going to leave the link in the description down below. But hey, we're back with Ethan Han Plus episodes. What an exciting time. Uh, you're welcome. Because you, hey, what, were you, what else were you doing in your past time? Nothing. You're just scratching your nut. You were just sitting at home doing nothing. But now, Delaware's favorite podcast is back in action. We have a great lineup of guests and Josh was here to help get it started. Um, yeah, remember, listen, on the YouTube channel, we're going to start doing mainly just podcasts and films now. When it comes to short skits, everything will be on my Instagram page. Follow my Instagram, Ethan Han Productions. They will also be on my TikTok, which is just Ethan, Ethan Han, Ethan Han Plus. Actually, I'll, I'll label it right here. I'll or leave it, the link in the description. But again, all skits will now be on my social media platforms while the YouTube channel will be now purely podcast and films. And to, speaking of films, we have a few exciting things coming up. Um, that I probably won't say yet, but Josh here will be a part of them, which is super exciting. And that is everything there, everybody. Again, if you want to watch SWAT Godfather, remember to check out the YouTube channel. Uh, let's try to hit 1,000 views by the time that this one comes out, and we're give, doing a giveaway for a SWAT vest and I believe a SWAT poster. So go ahead and help us get to 1,000 views, and I'm going to do a raffle to give out a SWAT vest and a SWAT poster. And again, without further ado, everyone, again, this has been another Ethan. Uh, thank you for watching. And always remember 
This has been Ethan Hahn Plus. Josh Ticchetti. Now we do some fake talking like doing talk shows. Oh. Keep bowing. There you go. There you go. Credits are rolling. Credits are rolling. Things are popping up.